On all these scales, your rolls for the quarter note rolls will be based on a rhythm just to make sure that you are consistent and you have a plan. When we get to the last half note roll, we need to treat that as a real roll because it's the last thing we hear and we can sound very smooth and legato on that roll. Not that the other rolls are not smooth and legato, but we need to have a systematic tempo and a plan. The first thing I want to talk to you about is hit spots. Now, when we get into high school, we're going to have some other options, but we're trying to train you right now to be a little more meticulous uh, at the 7th and 8th grade level. So we're going to be a little bit more picky with our hit spots. So we have a resonator underneath these notes. And so you can imagine there's a circle right here. We want to play just a little bit above the middle of the circle of that resonator and a little bit below. So when we roll, we have a stack choice of right hand on top or left hand on top. We want to pick those hit spots that are closest to each other to make sure we're using efficiency of motion. So whenever I'm playing scales, I'm aiming above center of the circle on the bottom and I'm aiming below the center of the circle for the top. That way I'm saving efficiency of motion and getting a good sound quality. To help me simplify this, the way I think about it is it's all about the left hand. So let's say we're doing a scale like C, F, or G scale that start on the bottom. So I'm going to stack my left hand on the bottom. Okay. Okay. That helps you kind of simplify your thinking. Just think if I'm starting on the bottom, my left hand's on the bottom. Let's say I have a top scale, uh, A flat, B flat, D flat, or E flat. I'm going to put my left hand on top. So that helps because when my left hand's stacked on top, I can reach down with my right hand instead of instead of my right hand having to go around my left hand. It also helps when you're on the top because then your left hand's out of the way again and you can reach straight down. For the bottom scales, it really helps out with the G scale. When you're going from that G to F sharp, to have your left on the bottom out of the way so you can get to that F sharp. So to wrap up, stack your left on bottom when you're on the bottom for your C, F, and G scale, and stack your left hand on top when you're on the top scales, A flat, B flat, D flat, E flat. Now the other thing I wanna talk about is your hit spots when you're not rolling. For my C scale, my left hand stacked on bottom. That puts my right hand above the center of the circle. So my right hand just kind of moves over. Now on the non-rolls, I want my left hand to also ride on the above center hit spots. So on that E, my left hand on that third note, on that E, my left hand's gonna move from the bottom of the resonator to the top to match the right. Match, 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 match. Now my left hand will pull to the bottom again. Match, 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 and now I pull my left hand. So again, it's all about the left hand. The left hand sets you up for the stack, and the left hand you have to think about moving it to the opposite of the stack when you're doing eighth notes. Other than the C, F, and G scale, you're not really gonna have to think about that too much. But what I don't want to see right now is that you're, you keep the stack the whole time. Because you're not really learning how to trust your stroke and get a piston stroke. Part of the piston stroke is getting your hand out of the way. So if you cheat and you go to stack the whole time, you're not really learning that skill set. Now, obviously you're going to learn these skills very slowly so you can focus on accuracy and consistency of sound, weight, rhythm, and also your hit spots. And over time, you will make sure that you're, you're getting up to our target tempos. One more thing about the scales. So I don't know if you can see my feet here, but what I would do is like, say for your C scale, I put my left foot on that C and my right foot on this C. Well, I'm gonna set that up and then I'm gonna lean to get to this C. And then I lean to get to the C. Now when I get to this middle C, I'm gonna put my feet together and then separate and then I'm gonna lean to get here, okay? A lot of kids don't move their feet at all and then they start turning their body and they're gonna start getting these bad hit spots as they get around. So you need to make sure you, you are able to do the marimba cha-cha or whatever you call it, um, where you have your feet apart together to get to the top, together to get to the bottom and move your weight back and forth as you're going from these different octaves. Okay, you don't really wanna rotate at the trunk at this point. All right, so another thing I wanna talk about is your grip pressure. So most kids are afraid to hit the wrong notes and they perform with fear. And that, what that does is you start to grip the mallets harder. So what happens when you grip the mallets really hard is you're taking the weight out of the stick and you get this kind of weak 
or you get imperfections because you're afraid to hit a wrong note and you have notes that are dipping. And so make sure you're holding the grip correctly, but relax in the back of your hand. Make sure the stick can breathe and, is, and, and has a little bit of relaxation and wobble to it. That way the stick, the weight of the mallet can go through. Okay, so for example, I think a good way to practice that finding that right grip, go ahead and start with a stiff, tight, army stroke and kind of feel how you're not feeling the weight of the mallet. The, weight, the mallet doesn't feel heavy in my hand. And then I'm gonna to start to use more wrist. And I'm not playing super high on these scales either. I may be playing eight inches. And then I'm gonna to start to relax my grip. And you're gonna to start to hear that sound quality become bigger and bigger and more round. Obviously you don't wanna downstroke and stop, freeze the stick down. Obviously you want a piston stroke. Playing on one note might be a good way to work on this, but also it'll help your hit spots because then you can work on your left being on the bottom and then moving to the top. And then also in order to play on the same note and play both mallets on the eighth notes above center, you're gonna have to piston to get your hand out of the way, and then you can work on that, that perfect grip tension and perfect piston stroke. Okay, you could start all tight. And then relax. And find that grip where you're letting the stick breathe. You can do the same thing on top. the stick transfer the weight through the instrument and then lift don't be too tight all right let's go through each scale one at a time and make sure you have uh, something to play along with they're all pretty straightforward okay thirds here I have kind of a visual display here for the key of C so if we were doing middle C here and that would be the leisure line below the treble clef that would be in a line the D would be on the space E is the first leisure line and the treble clef on the bottom. Okay, now I want you to think about this. All the red dots are lines in this octave. Okay, so it means all the white dots are spaces. And that's the way I want you to think about them. When you're learning thirds, I want you to, to learn that you're just going from a line to a line to a space to a space. Okay, so when you're first learning this, I know it has it split up. Okay, and we're left lead, but you, when you're learning this, you could learn this as double stops and really feel this moving together as a unit, okay? And then later we can split it up, okay? So that's one way you can learn this is by doing double stops, two eighth notes on each third. Obviously you wanna hit in a good hit spot, use piston stroke. Also make sure your feet are apart where you can be moving and keeping your belly button in front. Now don't rotate and get in a bad hit spot. Now we're left lead to start and if you think about it all we're doing is going up the scale with our left hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then your octave. Okay before you get to the octave you surround it, you're surrounding it and then you hit your octave with your left. Then we're reversing it. We're going to put our right hand on the top octave and the third below. And we're going to go right lead and we're just going down the scale in our right hand. Okay, now on the C scale, you're like, duh, I don't need that. But when we get to these other shapes, you might need to think about it that way because you're thinking about the shape of the scale. Okay, so let's do key of C. One, two, key of C, thirds, go. Reset. Now, let's go ahead and go to a different key. So let's think about B flat. So now we have more of a shape here, right? So we have to have this shape in mind, which is why we start with scales. But as you go through it again, we're going reds and whites. Now, a lot of kids get confused and then they go to the next thing and they kind of skip over and they do something else. So that's why I want you to think about your left hand going up the scale, especially in this instance. And then switch it. Okay, 
obviously we go one note above it because we did C, we already know C is here, and then we go one note below it, which is A, which is A down here. Okay, let's play the B flat third. One, two, ready, go. think about this is your left hand when you're going up your left hand will never cross over your right so you got to know your scale so well that you know that the next note in your left hand is going to be the one in between another way you might need to slow yourself down is to think okay move my left hand okay that's where it goes and then move my right hand if you think about moving both sometimes when you're first learning this you might get confused because you have shape now okay but think about it like this okay move 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 Okay, maybe you're not ready to move them as a group. So obviously, the pattern's pretty simple, but you've got to know the shape of the scale. So make sure you've mastered your scales first, and this will be pretty easy. And because of that, you should always play your scale first. All right, or whether you're doing uh, just quarter notes. Okay, so make sure you, when you run all 12, or whatever the assignment is, you practice it with the scale in front to set up your brain, then you do your thirds after that so you have the shape ready to go. So when you're running through this, always do it as your scale sequence with your scale in front of it, then thirds, and then of course, when you're ready, arpeggios. Hey, I want you to realize a couple things here. We already know what a C arpeggio looks like. Here's what our F arpeggio looks like. Same shape, just starts from F and goes to F. Same thing for G, G, same shape. Just goes across G to G. And G flat is also the same shape, straight across G flat to G flat. So there's one shape for four groups, which is a third of your scales. So one shape straight across covers one third of your arpeggio. The next shape I wanna talk about is what I call the little dipper. So let's do E flat. So it goes top, bottom, top, top. There are two other scales that have that same shape. D flat, same shape, top, bottom, top, top. And also A flat. Same shape, right? Top, bottom, top, top. Now we know that the bead scales, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, the, those letters that spell bead, are the inverse uh, shape-wise in your scales. So the same thing's gonna be reflected in your arpeggios. So for example, let's start with this A flat. We know that the A natural is gonna be the exact opposite. We had A flat, C, E flat, A. So C was the only thing on bottom. So, so when you do the A arpeggio, it's gonna be everything on bottom except for C sharp. A, C sharp, E, A. Okay, so it just flipped. So now it's not the little dipper, now it's like a little mountain and then a plane. So we know that those are gonna be the same shapes for E natural and D natural. So let's check out D natural. Same shape, right? Bottom, top, bottom, bottom. And the same thing for the E, bottom, top, bottom, bottom, right? So again, this little dipper in reverse kind of covers six more scales. So we've already covered 10 of these scales with kind of two shapes. All right, so the, the outlier here is B flat, and B natural, yes, they're the, they're the opposite of each other, but they're kind of their own shape. So we went over B flat already. To me, this is kind of shaped like a bowl, right? Okay, so that the B natural is gonna be the exact opposite because B is part of B, right? So that's the scales that are gonna be reverse of each other. So instead of a bowl facing up, it's a bowl facing down. So now we have this shape. B, D sharp, F sharp, B, instead of B flat, D, F, B flat. The D and F are now sharp, and we're doing B naturals, of course. Okay, so really there's only three shapes, straight across, little dipper, and then this bowl idea, right? Or you flip the little dipper. Okay, so there's really three shapes that gets you through all the shapes of the arpeggio. Okay, arpeggios. Now, of course, if you went through my handbook from the beginning, as a beginner in your daily drill, you've already learned all of your arpeggios in one octave. So all we're doing in scale sequence is doing two octaves. Okay, but first of all, I want to just kind of show you. I, I have this white dot and white dot on the octaves, and then I have my third right here, and then my fifth, because we know an arpeggio is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one again. One, three, five, one. Obviously, when we're doing two octaves, we have our C, E, G, C, and then again, C, E, G. So what we're doing here is similar to thirds, where we have a, a group, and we're moving them up to the next note in that group. So in other words, we have our one, three, five, one. Now we just did our five, one. So now let's drop to the second note in this group, which is E, and the right hand moves with it. 
and we move up the same notes, but it's this E up an octave, not here. So we start at this E, end at this E, okay? Three, five, one, three. E, G, C, E, okay? So we started with one, three, five, one, or C, E, G, C, same notes, but go down. E, G, C, E, or three, five, one, three. Now what's gonna happen next? Keep following the progression. We're gonna go down and go down and start on the one, three, five, start on the five now, because that's next. And of course we want G to G, right? Five, one, three, five, or G, C, E, G. And then of course the top is just, just like the bottom. Just like our daily drill, we're gonna do a double right and then do the reverse. But before we do that, let's go ahead and do that from the beginning. So we're gonna go up, drop, drop, drop. Okay, the other way you can think about this is every four notes of this sequence of this idea is building the arpeggio in your left hand. C note, 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 E note, 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 G note, 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 C note, note, note. Okay, so you're literally building the arpeggio with your left hand as you go through. Okay, let's try that one more time. One, two, ready, go. Okay, if you had trouble with that, go back and make a loop or repeat it or go practice and do it again with me or slow down the percentage. Now, obviously I have these dots to help guide me and you don't, but you should visualize just the eligible notes in your brain, highlighted a different color in your brain, use your imagination, but you need to kind of see those notes pop out in your own mind. Now you can always break this up and just do think and move, think and move, and then eventually think and move, and eventually you can take out that pause as you get more confident. Now, on the way down is the exact same thing, but opposite stickings. We have right hand, we're gonna go top C, move it up, move it up, move it up. So we're doing one, five, three, one, then we're gonna do five. Five, three, one, five, then three, three, one, five, three, then one again. One, five, three. Okay, so again, we're building our arpeggio down with our right hand every four notes. So we're going C, note, 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 G, note, 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 E, note, 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 C, note, 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 which is why it's important to have your shapes memorized because we're adding more to it. And if you're still having to think about the notes, it's just too much going on. You need to have these arpeggios memorized or the shape at least, and then you can think about other things. Let's try it in time. If it's too fast, loop it and slow it down. One, two, ready, go. Okay, now this is a C arpeggio. This is as hard as it gets besides the F in the G or the G flat that are all straight across as well, that's about as hard as it gets because it's all on the bottom or all on the top. When you get to B flat as an example, so we have our B flat, B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. So we have one, three, five, and of course, same on the top. Now we have some shapes that kind of help, help us. To me, that helps to have shape, to make it look a little bit different, right? Okay, I have this shape, then this shape, then this shape. So to have a little bit of shape here should help you out throughout the process. So remember, do your scales first to really get the, the shape of the scale, and then you should have this shape or notes, one, three, five, B flat, D, F, kind of memorize first. You kind of have to study a little bit first before you try this. So go back to scale sequence and make sure you're playing it from the beginning. Do your thirds and then you can skip through this arpeggio. Two octave scale sequence through all 12 keys. At 100, if that's too fast, put it at a slower percentage. Three, two, ready, go.
One, two, ready, go. E flat. One, two, ready, go. A flat. One, two, ready, go. E flat. One, two, ready, go. G flat. One, two, ready, go. Natural, two, ready, go. D. One, two, ready, go. Two, ready, go.
Ready? One, two, ready, go. Okay, so we know our scales now, so this will be pretty easy because green is basically foxtrot, but in 16th notes instead of 8th notes. So if you've gone through my handbook and you've done foxtrot, you're ready to go. Now I'm doing right hand lead on green. You should be able to do left lead as well, but we're going to focus on right lead. Now obviously we have a pattern here. Pretty simple. We know that in the key of C, we're straight across from C to C. We're just adding one more note. So what's the second note you play? D, right? So the top note will be D, okay? So that's where we're going. Now, we have pivot notes that I want you to think about. Now, we know our arpeggios, one, three, five, and we have one again, right? That's an arpeggio, you should already know that. Our pivot note is actually the fifth, okay? So we go C up the scale, G down the scale, C up the scale, G down the scale, C go all the way up to you get to what? We know we go one note past the octave to D and that's our other pivot note. So those are the things that I want you to think. You're pivoting. We're pivoting between C and G, right? You're one and your fifth. And then we're going one more note up from the octave, which is we know is a second. And when we're doing that, we're going back and forth between those pivot notes. Okay, so I encourage you to realize what your pivot notes are. It's the second note, but up an octave, and then we know our fifth. One of the reasons that's also helpful is we, if we think about, we do the C scale. We know the next scale is the F scale, right? So F scale, the arpeggio is F, A, C. We know we did that. And then one note above F is G, and we know it's gonna be there. Now, I want you to think about something. We just did the C scale. Now we're doing one flat in the key of F, because we have our B flat. What is the pivot note? C. That's the note you just played as your first note, the last scale. So you know your pivot note is the last scale you just played. Now, if that's true, then we know from going to C to G is our, we've already covered that at the beginning of the C scale. Okay, so we already kind of know the second half already because that's the scale we just played. Not only is your fifth the previous scale you played, that means you already built the last five notes. So you've already learned half of it once you progress through each one of these. One, two, ready, go. F, two, ready, go. Two, 
go. Ready, go. B, two, ready, go. Okay guys, here is your chromatic scale tutorial and run through. Now in different region band tryouts, sometimes it's written differently, sometimes it's written as eighth notes in duple time, one and two and three and, sometimes it's written in triplet eighth notes. I think either way, as long as you play it well, you're gonna get a high score. And I feel like thinking about it like triplets kind of helps it keep it rounded and it will help you. So I'm gonna reference this in triplets. Also, sometimes you might finish with a roll in your district and sometimes you might not. I'll have two different versions and in your portal, it will be the correct one for you. First off, there's a lot of things that are similar between your region scales and your chromatic scale. So make sure you watch your tutorial on your regular uh, seven region scales first, but I'm gonna go through a couple that are very similar. Now I would say first, the footwork is similar. So we're starting on C and our middle C is here, so I'm gonna put my feet there, okay? When I'm done playing the first octave, I'm gonna put my feet together, and as I continue, my right foot will spread apart to the high octave. And this will help your consistency with your hit spots, your routine, and just making sure everything's the same all the time. Obviously, when you're going down, same thing will happen, feet together, and then left foot spreads down, okay? So make sure we're doing the scale cha-cha-cha, right? Just like your regular seven region scales. The other thing that's similar is hit spots. We do want to hit dead center for everything. If you're in private lessons, they might be telling you to hit off center. Just make sure that you have been given the go ahead for off center and you know what that really means. But for right now, let's go ahead and have a control of center. So we actually are taking control of our aim first and then we can aim small later. Okay, so right over the resonators. Obviously we want to be using piston stroke. The stroke has to come up quickly. It's a quick lightning bolt and you're back up to your A position. So A, you hit on B and then you're right back up to A. A lot of kids downstroke and end down at B. They end up adding like a C position like in the middle, okay? You always gotta just come straight back up, match your heights at the top, obviously. Just like the region scales, if you make a mistake, just keep on going, do not stop, okay? You're gonna get the judge's attention if you stop. Okay, so just make sure you're always recovering uh, mistakes are a part of music and recovering is a major part of your skill set. All right, so first I want you to understand if we're thinking about this in triplets, I'm going to put this way down like at 80. They have one lolly, two lolly, three lolly. So if we were to play it, it would be like this. And so on, okay? So three eighth notes per beat. One lolly, two lolly. Now I actually want you to really understand just one hand for a second. All scales you should be able to do right hand lead or left hand lead. So both work, but in this case, the, the most consensus is right hand lead. And I think most of that is because of the top, okay? When you finish at the top, you don't have this big crossover. If you have a left lead, you're gonna be crossing over on one of the most important parts. So you should be able to do both, but let's stick with right hand lead. Now, that being said, let's know what our right hand is doing. So our right hand, because this is a chromatic scale and we're hitting half steps, your right hand is staying on the bottom with these three notes on C, D, E. Then there's a transition to the top, okay? And our right hand's gonna hit these three. Now I think that's pretty even to think about. One, two, three, then goes up. One, two, three, and we're gonna keep going. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then we, of course we hit the top C. Okay, so let's get that in quarter note triplets and I'll kind of show you what that is. But what we're playing right now is the whole tone scale or sometimes it's called the dream scale. So we have triple let 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 triple let. All right, while you're doing this, try to make sure you're getting the footwork as well. Okay, one, two, ready, go. One lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly. One lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly. One. Try it again. Reposition your feet. One, two, ready, go. 
One lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one. Okay, repeat that and loop it if you need to. We're gonna go on down, okay? So we hit this one C and then we got these three on the way down again. One, two, ready, go. One lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one. Try it again, ready, go. One lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one. If you can't do that, loop it and repeat it. Let's go up and down the whole way. One, two, right hand only. Ready, go. One more time. Ready, and go. Max out your piston strokes, your heights, your footwork, and of course your timing with the metronome. Okay, now if we just realize our left hand is just playing the notes that are in between, sometimes you might want to try that with your left hand just being a stick, but that might be confusing to some other people. So we're gonna try some other things before we do that. So I actually wanna create an exercise before we try the whole thing. So I just want you to play half the measure, okay? So we have two triplets and a release. Triple let, triple let, stop. Okay, so we have this transition so that your F in your left hand and then your right hand goes up. Triple let, trip, switch your left down and your right hand goes up, figure that out. Triple let, trip, left down, right up. You gotta figure that out. Triple let, triple let, stop. Play that with the beat. One, two, ready, go. Triple let, triple let, again. Again. Dead center. Piston stroke. Last time. Great. Now the next half is from your F sharp or G flat up to your C. Triple let, triple let, stop. Now your right hand comes down to that C. One, two, right on top. Again. 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 Piston stroke. Okay? Now obviously when you get to the second octave, you want to do your footwork, but then you're doing the same thing. And then... Now on your way down, it's the same idea. C to F sharp G or G flat. Ready, go. Again. Your right hand starts on the bottom, moves right to the top right away. Your left hand just stays on the bottom. Last time. Okay, now we're starting on this G flat, F sharp, and going to C. So the right hand starts on top and then goes to the bottom. Left hand goes to the top. So you got to understand these little mini chromatic half measures. Okay, and then of course on the way on the way down, you've already done that. So let's break it up into half and put a break in between. So it's going to be triple, let, triple, let, stop. Keep going. Triple, let, triple, let, stop. All the way through with a little break in there. One, two, ready, go. Move your left hand over. Move your left hand over. Move your left hand a little bit. Leave your left hand here. Move your left hand over. Move your left hand over. And we'll scoot your left over. Okay, and if you have a roll, we're gonna discuss that later. Okay, so notice your left hand just moves in these little half step increments, except at the top, it's already there, okay? So that's one of the things that beginners do or even some seventh graders do, is they try to move their left hand up to the top. It has to hang up there and hit B twice in the row. Okay, it just stays right there. Okay, let's try that one more time. One, two, ready, go. Leave your left hand.
Once you're done and comfortable with that, if you can do one octave increments with a little bit of a break, but always think about your halfway mark being here on this F sharp G flat, okay? From C to here is actually a tritone, okay? Okay, here we go, let's try it. One octave, one, two, ready, go. Two, spread your feet. Two, leave your left hand and go. Move your feet. Ready? Good. Left, left moves. Let's try that one more time. One, two, ready, go. Move your feet. Move your left hand. Leave everything. Leave your left hand. Move your left hand, move your feet. Ready? Go. Okay. Then obviously you could do two octaves and put a break and then do the whole thing. But we're going to do another thing that can kind of help you with some of the next transitions. Now, the hardest part about some of this is when you get faster is working through these transitions going from up to down. So what I want to do is kind of loop that and just really get over this idea. Okay. So I want you to put your right hand on F sharp, G flat, and I put your left hand on that F. And I want you to practice going back and forth where your right hand is on top and then transitions to the bottom and your left hand hits E flat. Then we're going to do the opposite and just go back and forth. So it's going to be triple let. Remember, we're not skipping any notes. We just want to kind of get used to this transition. And I, again, you need to use piston stroke so that you don't accidentally hit your mallet, okay? So let's just loop that. Triple it, triple it, ready, go. Actually, let's just do it three times. One, two, three, stop, uh, again. One, two, three, and go. So we want to get used to this transition here. Let's get used to this transition here. Now this one, we're going to start with the right hand on C, put your left hand on D flat, and we're actually going to start with the right hand to keep it consistent. Uh, but it's the same idea, but we're going to go right, left, right, left, right, left, and the left hand will move after. And stop on the C. One, two, three, stop. One. Two, three, stop again. Two, three, stop. Last time. Stop. Now at the top, I want to practice going from C, leaving the left hand on B, and moving the right hand up. Now because it's not the same amount of notes, it's going to sound like a hemiola. Let's just do a full measure repeat on this, and it kind of sounds like a hemiola. One, two, three, four, stop. Two, ready, go. Two, ready, go. Two, last time. Okay, so we're going to do this in context with the chromatic scale. So chromatic scale usually doesn't stop at all, but we're going to actually put those little transitions in there. And again, we're going to hit him three times. So it's going to be triple lit, triple lit. One, two, three. Now go. Triple lit, triple lit. One, two, three. Triple. And we'll just do it again. Two, three. And then keep going to the top. One. Stop. And then we'll go down, okay? So try to join me. We'll do it two times and see if you can figure it out. One, two, ready, go. One, one, two, three, keep going. One, two, three, keep going. One, two, three, keep going. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, 
stop. Now on the way down. Ready? Go. Two. Three. Keep going. One. Two. Three. Keep going. One. Two. Three. Keep going and finish it. Just finish that. Okay? One more time. Going to the top. Two. Ready? Go. One, two, three good hit spots. Keep going. One, two, three. Keep going. One, two, three. Go. Triple, let, triple, let, triple, let, triple, let, stop. Now on the way down. Ready? Go. One, two, three. Go. One, two, three. Keep going. One, two, three. And go and finish it. Okay, and that should help you get over all these weird transitions and give you a lot of confidence. Okay, like I said earlier, you could do uh, two octaves and stop at the top and then two octaves and stop at the bottom. That's another way you could break it down, but I think we're about ready to try the whole thing at 80 and build ourselves up. One, two, ready, go. If your district does the roll at the end, let's talk about that. As you're finishing it, your left hand's already on top. So when you start the roll, of course, you're gonna start right lead and just bring your left hand down on top and start rolling. Make sure when you do the roll, you don't play an accent and just play low. Make sure it sounds full and you have a little bit of that breathing room in the back of your hand and you relax and play in the same height. Again, don't just hit the first note and then play low and be all tight. Make sure it's a lot of wrist motion and relax in your fingers and get a nice full sound. Make sure you're surrounding that resonator in the same hit spot. So one slightly above center, one slightly below center. You don't want really to spread your hands out and get over the string. Okay, and it's only two beats. So triple, let triple, let triple, let triple, let stop. Okay, and make sure you don't slam the last note. Make sure the roll sounds beautiful. You can do that by having a nice touch and you're nice and relaxed. And make sure that one hand isn't higher and, and it's unbalanced. Make sure it sounds the same from hand to hand. Make sure the rhythm is nice and even that you don't have like a late hand or an early hand. Okay. All right, this is your region chromatic two octave scale uh, with the roll at the end. At 120. One, two, ready, go. One, two, ready, go. Okay, octaves. We know our chromatic scale. So we're going to be really using chromatic scale here. Obviously, I want you reading the music, but this progression is pretty easy. We're moving up and grouping to four using C as home base. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to go one note up chromatically and then go back for the rest of the four notes on C. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Keep moving up chromatically. Now we're gonna stop at G. So we're just doing a fifth, okay? Now once we're done with that G, we don't just go to G automatically, we have to finish the sequence. G, two, three, four, then we'll do G. And do the opposite. One, two, three, four. One, two, work your way chromatically. Pretty easy. Go for center. Finish the sequence. So we did one, two, three, four. Then we're just going to work our way up chromatically from C, double on the G, and double on the C on the bottom, just like we did for thirds or arpeggios. Double, double. Double, double. 
Okay, now that's the sequence, but obviously we want to do this in octaves, which is why it's called octave. Now, when we're working on this, we're working on trying to move our hands like they're in handcuffs, like we're just moving them together. We need to get used to this idea of octaves where we know where each note is. Okay, where we can just move our hands together and mirror each other all the time. Because you're going to have octaves in percussion ensemble, front ensemble. It's just going to keep reoccurring. So we need to get really good at this. Now, when you're doing this in chromatic fashion, don't accent. Right? It's all supposed to be up. Then also, because you're trying to work on your spatial awareness, you need to have that confident sound. Okay, don't play down here because you're a little shy and you're trying to get to the top. Try to keep it big. It depends on what your teacher wants but most likely you're gonna feel this in the back fulcrum, your back pinky, so the weight of the stick has a little more weight. If you're holding in the front, you have less weight, okay? And so be relaxed in the front of your fingers and let your wrist do the work. Yes, there's a little bit of natural arm motion, but this is mostly from the wrist. I don't want you to hit any secondary positions on the edge, definitely don't hit the strings. Go ahead and reach and work on your arm motion um, for right now since we're slow and make sure you're hitting in a good hit spot. All right, octaves at 100. One, two, ready, go. make a loop of that or go back and slow it down okay you already know how to hold the grip you've done some floor work now we're ready to put this on the keyboard with piston stroke the first exercise is double verticals okay so we're moving our hands vertically and we're playing with two notes so this is called double verticals now when you're doing this use good hit spots which means center okay and you're gonna pop these with piston Okay, and again, just like octaves, we gotta learn to move this together and, that, and coordinate ourselves. Now, of course, you could practice this with one hand only. That's a good strategy if you're having trouble with, with coordinating yourself, okay? Then do it with the other hand, okay? Then do it with both. You could also think about these inner mallets. We wanna keep our eyes central. So you could have your CG, CG. You could think about these inner mallets moving chromatically. They're staying at fourths, even though your hands are at fifths. Okay, so you could picture this as you play. Right? If that helps you. Now, obviously we're moving in chromatic fashion, but we are doing four quarter notes per group. One, two, three, four. We don't worry, we don't want to do speed here because we want to really focus on that piston. And that piston has a pause at the top. Now I'm not lifting a lot, but I'm putting a lot of energy into when I do strike. So I'm sitting there waiting. And then I repeat it, right? Repeat it. And then I go down on the octave. Walk, working on my hit spots. Working on my piston. Making sure my grip is not falling apart. I gotta put energy, okay? Don't play this soft, right? No downstrokes, you gotta pop it. Again, think about like flicking water off the tip of your mouth. It's gonna be quick motion, then back up, like you're whipping a towel, okay? Now, obviously, you wanna do that in octaves. Now, remember, for you middle school kids or maybe some small, uh, maybe some small high schoolers, Make sure that you, if you have a small frame, make sure you're not setting up your mouth like a rainbow. You might have to kick out your elbows to get things straight across. And then guys, also remember, as you're going forward, we don't wanna to have to move our arms back and forth too much. So I wanna put one foot forward and take your body there by shifting your weight to the front or the back foot, okay? Your teacher might say, put your left foot forward or put your right. For vibraphone players, you might, it might depend on the octave you're about to play do next but it really doesn't matter as long as you have a front foot and a back foot. Let's run it at 80 with nice piston strokes, nice and easy. One, two, ready, go. Repeat 
to F. Okay, interval shift. So we have two ideas here. We have A, okay, of course we're on home base again, C, G. A is where your G stays put and we're moving intervals and then back out. So we're still working on our basic double verticals but now we're learning how to move our inner mallet, whether that's your two mallet or three mallet. Again, these are labeled one, two, three, four from going left to right. So two and three are going to be the ones that move. Your pinky mallet is stationary, it doesn't ever move. You're kind of windshield wiping from the middle of your palm. The part that's in the middle of your palm is kind of like the hinge. Now, we're gonna keep the middle finger stationary as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bird perch and we're actually gonna move the thumb and the bird perch. Now we can finally pull the trigger. If it's our right hand, we're gonna move it to the right. And when we do that, you'll see the interval gets as small as it can get, okay? If you're having trouble with that, check that your fingers are not flat. Pull that pinky and ring finger away from your palm so you have independence here and you can actually rotate. The knuckle will go over the top of the pinky stick and you'll actually turn your hand over just a little bit. When you have a small interval, it'll look a lot like just regular snare drum American grip. Then when you open it back up, then you get back to that thumb on top more than you have thumb to the side on an American grip. You gotta get comfortable with this. Let's do this a couple times and really make sure we can get here, okay? You might have trouble and you might like, I'm stuck at a third. Well, check your grip, check it, and then help, maybe help yourself, squeeze it in there. You can get it that tight. You could get it right on top of it if you wanted to. You need to master this motion first before going through this exercise. Again, tuck that pinky down as far as it'll go, Get make a box with your ring and pinky and get it away and you should be able to do that. If not, you need to come to your teacher or me and let's see what's going on, otherwise we're not ready to play this exercise. Now the B variation is where you're keeping the C stationary, where you're moving the outside mallet in this case course you could do four on the floor and just work on moving your intervals okay some people like to do and work on just moving it right you could do this on the floor go from small to big with wrist and get used to that motion the rest of this exercise is going to be done in octaves in different combinations of a or b focus on a first g staying put and do your right hand alone pause the video or play along, loop it and play along with me and make sure you can do your right hand. Then do your left hand. One, two, ready, go. So you're making sure everything's good with just each hand. Okay, the third variation on the top, it says right and left hand on octave apart. Okay, so let's do that same thing. Leave the G's. One, two, three. Ready, go. Okay, now we're ready to do our B section. So that means we're gonna do right hand alone where the, the C stays and we're moving the G. Now, you're saying, well, hey, Mr. I, you said not to move my pinky. Well, you're not really moving your pinky. What you're doing is you're still moving your inner mallet, but what you're doing is you're moving your arm in and creating the illusion that you're moving your pinky. Okay, so it's really a lot more arm movement here as you move your thumb mallet. One, two, right hand, go. Always trying to strive for that piston stroke. Do that with your left hand. One, two, ready, go. Third very 
variation on this is to do it in octaves. One, two, ready, go. Now all that's left to do is mix and match these. So the first one is put your right hand on A and left hand on B. So that means our right hand's gonna be keeping the G stationary, okay, which is kind of inside motion, right? And then we're gonna keep our C stationary in our left hand. Okay, so all that's happening here is we're keeping the outside still, moving out and in. We call this inner motion because our inner mallets two and three are the only things moving, right? All right, let's give it a shot. One, two. Ready, go. Okay, and the last thing is outer motion, where we're gonna keep the G and the C in the middle stationary. I'll move these mallets in. Right, now remember, yes, you're still moving your thumb, but we're moving our arms in to create the illusion that we're moving our pinky. Our pinky is always stationary. One, two, outer motion, go. Okay, single independent stroke number one. So now we're getting out of the double verticals and we're getting to why this grip exists, which is to have independent motion, where we can move these notes separately instead of together uh, more easily. What I want you to do is I want you to throw your hand underneath and hold the pinky mallet and work on rotating with your thumb and just hitting your arm, okay? I'm rotating upon my pinky mallet, okay? Once you get used to that, then maybe just hold the tip and see if you can do it. See, I'm just, I don't know if I can close in on this, but I'm literally turning and rotating upon the stationary mallet. I'm rotating on that, okay? Then try it without anything. Now, this shouldn't be moving that much. If it's moving up and down with you, that's not what we're trying to do because you're gonna accidentally hit a note. You've gotta to learn to rotate. I think of this rotation, this inner rotation is more like a Bass guitar slap, pom pom pom. Okay. Slap at the bass, man. Slapping the bass, man. Slap at the bass, man. I slap at the bass. Please don't do that. I'm kind of turning it like that. All right. So you need to really get good at that. Now, obviously, once you have that pretty decently, go nice and slow. I mean, I remember when I first learned this as a high schooler, I was rotating so. I was really having to go painstakingly slow and figure this out. You're trying to train a muscle. And I'm really trying to focus on this mallet not moving. Then you can do it with a little more piston once you have that confidence. Okay, but you can't be moving up and down with the tacit mallet. The other motion, grab the mallet closest to you and then rotate and hit your leg. Hopefully I can see this in frame here, but go ahead and put your leg up and just hit your leg. Okay, then hold the tip, see if you can rotate, and see if you can see that rotation. Figure out this rotation. Now let go, see if you can do it without moving very much. Okay, well obviously when you get on the instrument, go slowly if you need to. Train this, like spend an hour just figuring this out. Then put a little more pop on it. Make sure it's not moving up and down like that, okay? Now I think of this as more of a knuckle rotation where I'm kind of making a circle with my knuckles. Okay, so there's like a thumb slap and then there's a knuckle. Obviously, those are the same motions in your left hand, but opposite, it's gonna be this mallet and then this mallet. Okay, so you need to work on each one uh, and work on this rotation nice and slow before you kind of, I mean, this exercise is pretty simple, so it's kind of what it's doing. You're focusing on each mallet moving and then keeping your hands in the tacit position up in the air and rotating upon that mallet. So when you're doing independent strokes, you need to, I know double verticals are pretty easy for you now, and those are gonna get a big sound because you're moving your whole hand together. When you're doing independent strokes, you're gonna have a tendency to be a little softer, so you need to add a little more pop. 
Okay, so try to think about really, even though it's one note at a time, you're really trying to get a big sound out of each. Okay, so this exercise is in home base, C, G, C, G. Make sure your hit spots are right in the center. Okay, center your body. Get yourself nice and relaxed. Get those hands always in the up position. Whenever we're playing, as soon as we play, we're gonna rotate on the tacit mallet in that hand, like we've been working on. Try to get a big sound, rotate quickly in piston stroke. We always wanna to return to the up position. So every time you play, if I take a picture between each stroke, it should be the same picture in the up position. This is in a four, two, one sequence. So we're gonna do four in each mallet, then two twice and then one four times. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, go. One mallet, two mallet, three mallet, four mallet. Now, here's your twos. Again. Ones. Four times. Stop. When you're playing, this mallet doesn't move. Or when you're playing this, this mallet doesn't move. You definitely don't want to see, right? Because you're going to accidentally hit. You always want to come back up. If you have trouble with that, go back and loop it at a slower tempo. Keep working on your sound rotation, hit spots, and piston stroke. Okay, alternating strokes variation, 1324. So 1324 is referencing the sticking. So we have one, three, two, four. Of course, we're in home base, CGCG. C, G. When we're starting, we're starting with one, three together. So we gotta rotate on our, rotate on our knuckle and our thumb in our three mallet. Okay, and then we're rotating our thumb in the two mallet and the knuckle in our four mallet. So 13 and 24 together to start. Now we wanna make sure that we're always coming back up, rotating, coming up. We don't wanna see a seesaw where one is up, one is down. We don't want that. Okay, we wanna come back up again. Between each stroke, take a picture, it should look the same. We're back to our home base up position, okay? All right, and then later when we start doing our permutation, there's a delay and we go one, three, 13, two, four. Same thing, we don't wanna see a seesaw. We always wanna come up. Okay, you might wanna get comfortable on the floor with this first, but that's basically what we're going for. We need to have an even sound and always come back up. This is not moving chromatically, it's just it's moving across stepwise motion. Okay, pretty straightforward. Here we go. Let's do this nice and slow at 60. One, two, pop the piston stroke. Trying to get a big sound. Always coming up. No down strokes. Okay, the other variation you'll see is 1423 outer motion. So that would be going out in. And then when we get to the split permutation, it's going to be in that order 14, 1, 4, 2, 3. Kind of the same idea, but we're kind of changing the motion. Let's try it. 1, 2, outside first. exercise double lateral variations it's just like it says one two three four 
And then on the way down, we're gonna go four, three, two, one. That's the first variation. We could also do outside and inside. Okay, you'll see those outside, one, two, four, three. And a lot of ripple roll variations. Okay, but that's a faster technique. Right now we're trying to do it very slowly. And the inside, we'll just be going from the in to out. A lot of times when you're practicing this, maybe just practice flams first with no grace note. Just one, two, on the floor, and get used to that being very quick. Or inside. Inside out, it's a lot more difficult. I actually put a little bit of pop into my fingers on these. Okay, so again, try to get the pop. It might be a little bit of a flinch in your fingers to help you with that, but it's pretty stationary. Okay, obviously we have eighth notes to start if you're reading your music, right? Going up in home bass, eighth notes, then sixteenth notes. And then similar to double verticals, we're just moving up chromatically, right? Okay, so same sequence as double verticals, except with these permutations. Now, the only difference is on the way up, when we get to our F final chord, we stop on beat four so that we can reverse, because we don't want to go. Very possible, but I don't want to do that to you. Three, stop, reset. Four, three, two, one. Okay, so again, go for piston stroke, make sure everything's coming up, get your rotations and lift, and try to give me some pop. Here we go, at 60. One, two, ready, go. Forget to stop on four. Four. Four, three, two, one. comfortable with that and your technique suffering go to the floor for a little bit and just work out the permutation okay the other variation would be one two four three four three and on the way down it would be three four two one thirty four twenty one okay let's try that one two ready go Two. 